We got James Duthie here. All right, let's bring in Duthie. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm good, boys. How are you? Yeah, very, very well. So let's start with, have you talked to Roberto, and what can you tell us about being snubbed for the Heritage Classic there on Sunday? Uh, I have have spoken with him uh, just briefly for about a minute, uh, because I think his phone was blowing up, and he was in the midst of signing the papers right then and there. So his reaction... Uh, he was still trying to figure out his reaction. He was a little shocked that it was able to get done because I think he'd convinced himself that it was going to be summer or bust if there was a trade that was going to happen. Um, but I think in the end, once this all settles in, uh, he's he's going to be, I'm not going to say happy, I think that he really did like his time in Vancouver and he's you know going to a team that's not in the playoff position, obviously, in the Florida Panthers, but... I think that there will be relief that it's all over. I guess the one thing I got from him was a little bit of relief. Yeah, we're with James Duthie of TSN, Matt Sakaris, Blake Price, Barry McDonald. Uh, well, James, the one thing that's happened is he may not win as much uh, in Florida, at least in the near term here, but, of course, a state with no income tax. He's made himself a heck of a lot of money here. He's back with his family down in mm-hmm. South Florida. And um, let me ask this, because he changed agents last year and, of course, went to two of the heavy hitters in the game, including Pat uh, Brisson, the agent for Sidney Crosby. How much were they involved in facilitating this deal? A large part. Um, Okay, part of this is, I'll say right away, uh, I didn't have a chance to talk to Roberto for very long. I talked to Brisson for a couple of minutes. So um, what I'm about to say is not fact. It's me putting things together from what I do know. I believe that after he was benched on the weekend for the outdoor indoor game that uh that Pat Brisson got involved and called Mike Gillis and said you know we it's time to move this along this has gone on long enough uh I you know Roberto was obviously not happy about that situation and I think Brisson was uh, was less happy probably as his agent. So, and I think it went from there. So this is not something that what I, what I, I think is more interesting is the ability to get Dale Talon back on board because you know he's always sort of been on the periphery of Luongo trade talks from when they first started almost two years ago, but the contract was always problematic for him. So, uh, I'm just guessing that the Brisson talks with Gillis and. Uh, Gillis understood that maybe it was time, and I think once the Canucks offered to maybe eat a little bit of the salary, which is definitely part of this deal, that uh, one thing led to another, and they were able to get it done over the last couple of days. James, one day when Roberto has time to reflect on his time in Vancouver, how do you think he will reflect on his time in Vancouver? I think very fondly. Like, <laughs> This has been the bizarre. I think you could do a little TV movie of the week on the last couple of years here. And you guys have talked about it, I'm sure, endlessly. But it's to me, it's just a, it's a, it's been a fascinating, it's been a fascinating study and, and personality uh, study. Uh, how really in the last two years they've been the most miserable years of his career and all these crazy things that have happened, and yet at the same time his popularity has grown exponentially just in the way that he's handled it. We all remember Roberto was, I think, somewhat misunderstood before, but perceived as uh, you know, a little bit of a brooding guy by the media and wasn't all that popular with the fans. And I think that, uh, that this changed all of that, the way he handled this situation. And so I think Roberto will look back incredibly fondly on his days in Vancouver, and the fans will look back fondly on Luongo uh, 10 years from now, five years from now, with the with just that one big asterisk being losing that Game 7. We're with James Duthie of TSN. We Roberto Luongo is talking right now in Phoenix on his way to the Florida Panthers. We will get you those comments as soon as we can. Blake, you had a question James, for is James. this a mutually exclusive deal from the Ryan Kessler deal? Does one affect the other, do you think? And then ultimately, yeah. you know, what, you know what, what's the perception of this franchise right now from Mike Gillis to John Tortorella? That's a great question, Blake, and I'm, that's one I'm trying to figure out myself. So uh, I, I would say that it probably is mutually exclusive, that this is simply a result of something that had dragged on too long and an acceptance by Mike Gillis that that was the case. And, again, the fact that Florida expressed interest again and and that Brisson was able to bring these two sides together and get something done, that 
it is exclusive, but at the same time, to me, anyway, it makes the Canucks maybe right there with Buffalo is the most fascinating team to watch tomorrow simply because it does to me it does open a little bit of a door if you're if you're trading away your starting goaltender i mean it's one thing to think that Eddie Lack's playing well enough to start the outdoor game it's another thing to say that he's going to be your guy now to lead you to the playoffs so i, I there has to be a little bit of a signaling from this that they're they're looking beyond this year and in that case it's not just Kessler but maybe it opens doors to who knows Edler and others but i don't think there's a direct correlation i wouldn't be saying now, the floodgates are open now. Vancouver's going to trade everybody because they traded Luongo. I think you have to look at this somewhat in, in a vacuum, but I think it, it still opens the door to a lot possibly to happen. But don't, I don't think it, I w- it wouldn't shock me if Kessler isn't traded, if, if that's where you're going. Yeah. We've got this right. Tim Thomas and Roberto Luongo are now teammates, <laughs> correct? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the other just fantastic little sidebar to this. Hey, James, I know you're close to him. What do you you talked earlier about his persona and that maybe he'd been misunderstood a little bit, and how well he handled the Schneider thing? Was there a sort of a salient moment along the way where Roberto, you know, consciously tweaked his personality a little bit to become what inevitably became was a much more likable person, both I think to, to the media and certainly to the fan base here. You see, I, I think he was always like that, and maybe he just didn't express it well with the media. Um, I, I did not know the guy at all until I went down to do that original piece in Florida with Jamie McLennan, that first shtick piece um, with McLennan being the backup to, to Luongo and fantasizing about and running him over with a Zamboni and all that stuff. That's the first time I met Lou, and I was under the same impression that everybody else was, that he was... You know, just sort of this, as I said, a bit of aloof superstar. And I came away from that, you know, one eight-hour shoot saying, okay, this guy's completely different than I thought. He's really funny. He's really down to earth. And and Jamie McLennan had been telling me the same thing all along. And so I think it was more of, and I think most teammates who played with him had said the same thing. So I really hate to give tons of credit to something like Twitter, but I, I really think that that, that started the change of perception in him when he the tweets that people didn't think he take, took himself so seriously, and then you, you compound that with with the way he handled all of this stuff. I mean, I called him on Saturday after the benching, and I said, "Are you, you know what's going to happen now? Are you going to go? Are you going to demand a trade?" And and he was he was remarkably calm, uh, and you know part of that might have been that Brisa was working behind the scenes, but. He just said at that point, you know, I just I don't want to go through all the crap I went through last year with everybody asking me about it, the possible disappointment of not being dealt. I just want to play. And I think he fully realized, I think he thought at the time that he was going to have to play his way. If he even wanted to get traded, he'd have to play his way back into a market for himself. And, and that would take a heck of a two months here down the stretch. So... Uh, sorry, that's a long-winded way of saying that I think he's always been that type of guy. It's just that maybe our perception had to be altered. It's funny, James. I had a, a similar story, and then the uh, first time I met him was in the Florida Panthers room years and years ago where they were doing like a, a, a trivia quiz contest with their players where one of the Florida Panthers employees was asking uh, all the players like 10 NHL trivia questions and Roberto sat down and was taking it so seriously and at the end was like how did I do how did I do how did I do in comparison to my teammates and it was clear to me that a guy who wanted to win trivia you know <laughs> his defining characteristic was competitiveness right how do you think he will react to going back to a market where the playoffs aren't going to happen this year and may not happen for a few years here well, it's funny when 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 I first talked to him when this all first happened um, back the two years ago when they lost to L.A. and Schneider started those last couple of games. Uh, you know, we talked a lot about okay, if if you were to get dealt, where would you want to go? And Tampa Bay and Florida were always sort of one two on his list. And I think I think that if Tampa Bay was number one, it was only because they looked more like a contender at the time. And then Florida had that playoff run and. Uh, he does want to win, definitely. Um, oh, geez. Okay, he's. Um, I'm gonna have to take a call. Yeah, yeah no, James. We know we were down to the uh, end with you. Thank you. Take the call. Appreciate the time. Okay, buddy. Take Thanks. Care.